All right. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Just like, like in the in tank, tank uh, that's the fog, we just saw. Uh, that just is going to be straight to Olga. That's going to determine who gets ahead and who doesn't. Um, but because this is full game, tanker is not that big of a factor. You can have a pretty okay tanker or even like a, a relatively like, like a rough tanker and then you can make time up and plug well. It's, it's not the end of the world. world. House is ahead right now, slightly. RTA wise. There's a question maybe you can answer. Is, does Snake run faster without the um, M9 equipped in some situations? Is that why? No. Some people uh, do the unequipped first. He, he doesn't run faster, but it allows you to like, it gives you more like fluid movement. So like the movement feels looser when he doesn't have a, a gun equipped. When you have a gun equipped, it feels like he turns tighter or just moves a lot tighter. So sometimes for uh, I've been with the certain things like running born. up those stairs there up into like deck C I can't uh, run or even deck D going up the small set of stairs, sometimes it's better to just run without a pistol. So you can just like fluidly snap into it. Interesting. It makes no difference. You can do it with an M9 as well. Like it's just all whether you're, you're used to the movement or not. Well, Nick pulling ahead here. My house, house having a little bit of trouble. Longer. I should get him. Yeah, there we go. Not too far behind. It was only uh, probably like five, six seconds. But nice from Nick getting out first there. Longer. I'll give him a little bit of lead in tanker, but like I said before, plant is where it's all to play for. Tanker here is it, it's not not the end of the world. Pretty straightforward tanker, it's linear, you know, like most of this game, but it's tight spaces, CQB, like optimal movement. I was getting a little bit caught up there with the controls. Nick opting for that distraction shot. I don't think he intends to do it. I think he goes for the shot in the guard and just manages to hit the uh, window. It's just a trick shot. Yeah, just swagging. Just swagging out. I think House will go for the, the modern strap. He's been uh, grinding this out recently, uh, which has been good to see because he's going to be in an event at uh, ESA. The race. Yeah, congrats to uh, him. That's this, awesome. Yeah. Him and Mockingjay, another runner in the community. He's going to be at ESA in Sweden in uh, January or February, I think it is, sorry. It's in February. Which is good to see. V getting a, getting a big stage there. So, House has been putting in the work recently. Um, so, we'll probably see a lot more modern strats at House. Good center. Another one here. Yep. Center. Like I said before, it can be finicky. Carrigs hit the C4. That center <laughs> is. It's right next to a pack of C4, and if you're too quick, you can just miss the, the center and hit the C4. I've done it before. I've got a quick center. I usually shoot that center really quick, but usually I'm good. I've hit the C4. Attacking. Stay nice snow alert from Nick. See how still up. No, no alert. House. There's a trick to not get an alert here. If you are uh, that first guard, if you not uh, the first guard that you you're running up to, 
when you first enter this section, if you hit him with a USP shot and then drank him or hold him up, you pretty much never get an alert. Um, oh, really? I always thought it was the um, timing um, when you came around the corner to the second guard. It can be, you can. If you don't do that, if you just drank the guard, like, you can get it through being quick on that, that second guard. But if you just, like, basically, you can just never have the alert. USP shot and then try and hold up the first guard. I think it has to do with when you bump into him or if you kill him or try and him, it's you slow down slightly. It's to do with the positioning of the last guard. For whatever reason, it allows that last guard that falls asleep to be further down, to make his way further down, and that way he doesn't get the alert off of the second guy spotting you. Oh, okay. Both are opting for standard landing glitch. House missing the camera equip, so he'll have to go again. Nick getting it. Uh, not not too big of a deal. Um, you only lose like a second or so. Nick going for a safer strap from Projector. So's House. Okay. Yeah, that guard for whatever reason is a little finicky sometimes. As you saw in my last uh, playthrough, <laughs> he caught me. So that was just my fault because I didn't fire though. Yeah, the flick the flick shot can be uh, can be a tough one, uh, especially for people that like say haven't played in a while or. Oh. House getting to continue Great. on the roll. By having a, the roll lined up correctly there will uh, can cause that. You got a lucky one. Yeah. I did, I almost got caught. <laughs> right where House was just now, yeah. I mentioned that sometimes it can randomly happen if you're like, I think it's dependent on where you manage to land when you do the last roll, if you, you mess it up or it's not correct. You bump the guard and you actually make it through him without spotting you. Photos look good though, from both. Yeah, they got out with photos. House not far behind. Making it look nice and easy. Like I said, not the end of the world. Having uh, a not so great tanker even with a continue. Um. Okay, Nick entering plant now. House will just be right behind him. He just gets past his save boss. There we go. Managed to get past it. That's a tricky one. There's a couple of save bosses, some of the hardest bosses in the game, because they creep up on you if you, if you don't remember where they are. Yeah, uh, if you cost you a couple of seconds. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you're really screwed. Yeah. My tip for that, if if a save is coming after a codec and you know there's going to be a, uh, like especially in plant when Rose is ringing, uh, you can just hold B or, or circle with turbo. Oh. Uh, if okay. you have if you have the control set to it. Um, which usually on turbo you have all the all four face buttons. Right. Just hold that instead of the X, and you'll skip through. That's fine. This section is on a, a like a timer. It's basically on a rail. You have to wait for an, an elevator to come down here so we can get up to the top of Stray. So usually we'll see runners run back and grab the M9 here because you don't lose any time for doing it and you can either grab it here if you don't you'll grab it up top on the roof on very easy uh, so we'll see nick go back we'll probably see house go back usually most runners will go back and grab it just for the sake of, of having it it's a nice little homage to the mgs1 docks i feel like yeah yeah i think it's uh i mean well it, in terms of the law this, this game is a straight copy of mgs1 it's supposed mm -hmm. to be similar so yeah, you're probably right on there. It's a section where you just have to wait. It's on a rail. We'll start. Let me see Nick going up in the elevator. House would be just behind him. A couple of little mandatory codex we're going to have here for the next few minutes as we, uh, Enter the different struts. So we make our way to Stillman. Cutscenes. The elusive. I don't know, 69 minute, 420. <laughs> like a minute cutscene that none of us know exactly the how long it is, but we do not want to. Uh, we do, definitely do not want to get it, so that's why we'll always play on a 
New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus save. If you do a new game and you go to plant, you'll get the Steelman cutscene. And it's like, I think it's like, being serious, I think it's like four minutes or something. It's just a big time loss. It will cost you a race for sure. Is that the only place where that uh, New Game Plus yeah, save um, saves time? Anything in tanker? Uh, or just... It doesn't do anything in tanker. It does other stuff on plant on other difficulties. It changes certain bomb locations, I believe, on higher difficulties. On VE, all it does is reality is allow you to skip that cutscene. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's anything on VE that I can think of that it does anything other than that. But on higher difficulties, yeah, it changes bomb location. I think in strut E bomb location changes as well as some other one is it a better location more in favor for the uh, runner or? i don't remember actually I, I don't remember i'm not one that i don't often run i don't run any of the high difficulties i'm starting to run normal um but on a new game plus save nothing changes on normal either so At least for bombs, when you think it's pretty much the same. So we, we see the still one cutscene, they were able to skip it, saving themselves a whole chunk of time. And now we're going to see a split in the route, because House has opted to go for what we call conveyor route, which is where we do the bombs anti-clockwise, while Nick does like a, I guess a standard route, what we call a standard route. So Nick will go clockwise around the struts, and House is going to go anti-clockwise. The big difference though, is House is going to collect two boxes, on his way around at two different locations one in strut a pump room and one on uh, the helipad in strut e and he's going to use those boxes to perform a glitch that will allow him to skip struts using the conveyor belt almost like the mgs1 the trucks you can use the crate uh, the carts and the mgs3 you can use the box in the, the the trucks to get around um in this one obviously there's no cars we're on a plant in the middle of the ocean so there's a conveyor system though, and uh, you can do a glitch that allows you to get onto the conveyor system without having to wait on the little platforms. We're able to just jump up, equip the box, walk into the uh, the correct um, like loading zone on the machine, and get transported immediately to the strut that the box is uh, set for. It's interesting. When was that discovered? Uh, it's been known for a while, but it's become more and more. Uh, used recently, especially for higher difficulties and normal. Normal got a, uh, recently, there's been a lot of interest in normal again, uh, which is good. And um, there's been some routing done to make it uh, more on the route, just make it easier and for people to grab it. So yeah, VE only saves 10, about 10 seconds. It's just not a big time save, but hey, if you want to go for it, why not? Who's there? If House misses it though, if he doesn't get it, like if he, make, if he makes big mistakes, he pretty much lose all the time save it gives you. It's only 10 seconds, so. We'll see who's ahead when they come to, uh, they'll both meet in Stray. It's still, everybody meets up at Stray for, the, uh, for a fight later on. They have to go defuse a bomb downstairs. So we'll see where it, who's ahead and who's behind there. It's hard to tell when the routes are split like this. But we'll see Nick. Nick doing a standard route, he's just going to come into strike F here. Um, House will actually, if he does it optimally or, or good enough, he will skip. Um, I think he'll skip two struts or a strut instead of what Nick will have to do, which is Nick will go through all the struts. Uh, to get back to where he needs to be uh, eventually for the fortune fight where his house will uh, be able to skip I think it's one or two there. strats which is the time save you give you. now did house just um not get that codec after freezing that bomb because he already got it on a different one yeah and because of the route change yeah he will get it on a different he's i can't remember if you get it got it already but yeah he'll get it differently because of the route changes, the codex are uh, set up differently. You'll get them at different points instead of clockwise. 
you'll get a codec here on uh, the helipad where Nick won't. You'll have, if you've noticed that Nick wouldn't have gotten a codec on the helipad where a house will. But Nick will get a codec. Um, this is next codec. His next codec will be in Strutby. So how the warehouse's codec that he's about to get is the same one that Nick will get in Strutby, which is the next strut he'll go to. Hmm? There's somebody there. Five so far and uh, good runs. I'm good. Hopefully house can make up some time here on plant. We get some good boss fights in. It's not easy to tell who's ahead, but I think Nick's still ahead, slightly. So this is the, the second box, House is going to pick up box 3. This will allow him to go to strut A. But right now, when he goes down, he goes back into strut E here. He's going to line up with the uh, conveyor belt on uh, this unit that's going to be behind him. And then he's going to get on top of it and equip box 2. I'm thinking box 1, sorry. Box 1, which is he's allowed from strut A. He's going to come here. He's going to use the visual lineup, just the little symbols on the unit. There we go. Very He's going nice. to send him straight to Strat scene. So how difficult is that trick? Is it just a matter of facing the right uh, direction? And it, it's pretty easy. You can you can mess it up. He can slip off. Raiden can slip off. Um, when you get on to, to conveyor belt, uh, obviously your movement is usually like pretty fluid, so you can accidentally go too far. We'll slip off the side and there's a little like square corner in between like where this the conveyor belt the free side where you're just in the room the other side that there's this little square corner and your soft lock people have done that before slipped into their backs then falling trying to cut the corner too quick or move oh, too okay. far and if that's the case you soft lock because uh, you can't actually alert the garden there on ve maybe not on any other difficulty either because the room is loud um so like mechanically the game mechanic is like the guards can't hear like lot loud weapons the, the oh, really? I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah. So you'll, you'll, get, you'll have to take a continue or a reset, which you know, in a race is pretty much what you do. But House got it, which is good. So he did the he did the visual lineup, which uh, there's these three, like this little red sticker with three white boxes on it on the machine that, he's, that he wants to actually go into when he gets on top of it. And if you have the middle one, if it's like you need the first one fully on your in your view, and then the second one needs to be like halfway, you need halfway, and then usually you're lined up. The other way to do it is uh, you can have the M9 out, uh, lean against the, the machine like you did, and then aim the gun at the little green strut, and you'll see that green strut there, the little scaffolding, and then uh, shoot, and then press triangle to get on. It should work as well. Managing to do pretty well though, got back on again, a little bit of menu mistakes there, but he's, uh, he's in strut A pump room. Nick's still ahead, uh, but House uh, following shortly behind him, thanks to Conveyor. It does give you a... Uh, it does bring you closer if someone does clockwise and you do Conveyor Strat. Now they're going to go down and defuse this, uh, the final, the big bomb. Well, if they say it's the big bomb, but it's actually not. Spoilers. There's a bigger bomb. Uh, but they're going to defuse this bomb here, and then they're going to fight Fortune. It's not really a boss fight, but they still put it down as a boss fight. Nick failing so to it get the bomb. Like they're roughly 30 seconds apart, based on the time on the, uh, on the timer. Yeah. House caught up though, because Nick had some issues uh, spraying that bomb there. You have to be close enough to spray it, but not too close. You, there's there's some weird points at that bomb where you can be quite far away and it'll still work. But if you get too close, Raiden will jump into the, the water and it'll cost you like five, seven seconds just alone, because you'd have to get out. And if you didn't defuse the bomb, you're going to have to get out and defuse the bomb again. Mm. So here they are both in fortune here. Uh, this fight is not on a rail, even though it looks like it, or a lot of people think it is. But there, there is a way to manipulate it. You can speed up the fight. It requires you to be in certain positions so that uh, Fortune will destroy a certain amount and a certain set of items in the room. So basically, she needs to destroy these two yellow barrels. 
the front end, you see the one on the left, and there's one on the right. Which you also need to, you need to wait for it to do a certain amount of shots, or destroy a certain amount of other stuff, so that you can set up correctly, so that you can uh, get a time save here, so you can make the fight go quicker. Unfortunately, they both got a voice line, which means they will lose time. Do not want a voice line in this. If she says, like, what she did there, which is, what are you doing? And kill me, or shoot me. You are losing time, unfortunately. Um, they would, they still should get a relatively quick fight from, like, a, a normal... Like, if you didn't do any manipulation, they will still end the fight relatively quicker than you normally would, but... They won't save any time, or they won't save much, they'll lose time, unfortunately. This fight can be finicky to learn, to learn the manipulation strats, because there are different ways of doing it, and I think a lot of runners do different things during the fight. Yeah, I think what I usually do was based on what Limes' uh, tutorial shows. Um, just, you know, take a few steps forward, crouch, let her shoot the forklift, and then get over into the right-hand corner for a bit, and then move up towards the uh, the barrels, and then kind of go in a counterclockwise uh, yeah. rotation till you get to the back of the room and just sit there. Yeah, the one in the guide works just fine. Um, I know there are other methods. I have a slightly different one, but it works the same. House actually hit the claim on, so when you come up from that fight, fight in quotation marks, it's not really a fight. Uh, there's a pack of chaff grenades that we'll usually pick up. You don't have to. Uh, you can do chaffless strats. They're actually for very later on. Um, but you can do uh, chaffless strats. You don't have to pick them up. But chaffless strats are like advanced, so we probably won't, we probably won't see these runners do it. Um, and but there, there's claymores. There's a claymore. There's two actually. There's one right near the pack of chaffs, and there's one just before the door. And uh, it's a very tight path to get through the gateway and not get hit by the claymore. House actually got hit, Nick dodged it. Do you either dodge it, you damage cancel, where you basically is where you hit a claymore and don't take damage, you don't, you just walk through it and it explodes and you don't get knocked down, you don't take damage, or you get hit by it. Unfortunately, House got hit by it and it does cost like two seconds. It's nothing major. You generally don't want to get hit because it's just annoying. But House did get hit, unfortunately, Nick made, managed to make it through. Uh, now they're on the Fatman fight, we're going to see Nick do lethal Fatman. Yeah. So it's going to be a two cycle guaranteed. And I think we'll see House do, yep, House is going to go for lethal as well. Um, lethal is the most, like it's the consistent option. There is non-lethal, uh, but it's an advanced strat. And if you don't do it correctly, uh, it'll cost you a lot of time. So both our runners opting for lethal, which is good, consistent, works. And you can still be pretty fast with lethal. Now, about that uh, big bomb that I said, that they said was earlier, but they were lying. This is the big bomb. Underneath Fat Man's body. Yeah, we're just going to have a bunch of cutscenes here where you're talking to the ninja, aka. Uh, spoilers, if you, you know, this game's been out for a long enough time. It's Olga. You'll find out later. This game came out in 2001. Whatever, so... Yeah, there's been enough time. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Crazy to think it's been 20 years already. Yeah. Yeah. We celebrate it. about you, it makes me feel old. <laughs> Yeah, I remember getting this on launch 20 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. it's Soul, anyway, and then Substance came out later, but uh, I mean, it's the same game, relatively speaking, in terms of the main game. So, uh, but yeah, I remember playing this back in the day. It was crazy. crazy. Coming from really MGS1 was. and then seeing right. this, yeah. It still holds up to this day, though. I mean,. It Graphically, does. it does look still, you know, still look pretty solid. We are on the PC version, which obviously does look slightly better than the PS2 version, but for a PS2 game, it's one of the better looking ones. If not the best looking one, it, it does hold up. 
even though we are on PC and textures are slightly like nicer, it, it's still a, a game from 2001, 2003 era. You know? So, oh, House getting shot here because he didn't have the 8K equipped. Oof. When he came out that door. Uh, having some menu issues here. Um, that's going to cost him a bunch of time. Nick going for Claymore strats, so the strat that Nick's doing in B2 is when you pick up the Claymore that they picked up earlier on the EF bridge for Fat Man, they, uh, they pick up the Claymore and you use it here, you plant the Claymore in the, the elevator, as you saw Nick do, and you'll see House do there, and then you equip the AK, you shoot it, you'll get an alert, and then by the time you make it down the stairs, the alert will be gone so they won't spot you, guards will spot you through the disguise and alert. And what that does is it keeps the elevator door open. So you'll see Nick come up here. He doesn't have to press the elevator button. He just walk straight in. If you get another alert in the middle of this, so say House got spotted here or, or did something that got an alert, the elevator door would close usually, and you'd have to wait again. But they both they both got through pretty clean. Very good. Ooh. Doesn't it also skip a cutscene? It does. Yeah, it skips the cutscene of the, the guard. Nick having some trouble here. Uh, I've been in this situation before. What you, what you need to do is, you'll usually do what House is doing, uh, which Nick did, but he, I think he went to grab the guard a little too early, and so the guard spotted him and kicked him. What you do is you knock on, you come out the elevator, knock on the left wall, and then move over to the scanner and do two punches, so that you're lined up in the middle of the, the, the walkway there, uh, correctly. And then you'll wait for the guard to pass, and you'll choke him and unequip the AK, or you unequip the AK and beat you and choke him. Uh, Nick did it a little bit too early, so... Uh, and now we're here to find Ames. Richard Ames, or Dick Ames, as we like to call him. You can spawn pretty much anywhere in this room. Uh, and the best spawns are obviously the closest ones to the, the entrance of the room, where you spawn in at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, House got the, one of the worst spawns, if not the worst spawn. Uh, which was top left, the west side of the room, top west side of the room. And Nick actually got a good one, but I think Nick missed him and didn't spot him. Yeah, uh, now, can you explain uh, the old lady spawn? <laughs> I keep hearing that. Is that so something, I, is it random or is that something that random. they're using the, the trainer no. to kind of force? You can use the trainer to force the spawns. Uh, that is actually allowed as well on board rules, so uh, it's not like cheating. You're allowed to do it. Uh, you can use the trainer to force it, but it's actually based on your system clock. So your PC's clock, uh, oh. or if you're on console, your system clock. Um, it's set at certain times of the day, you will get different uh, hostage spawns. So uh, I think they had Jennifer there. Or some uh, Nick had old ladies, and I think House had Jennifer. Um, I don't, I can't remember the exact times. I think it's between ten and eleven is old lady spawn, and then Jennifer I think is after that, sometime after that. Uh, but it's all based on your local time, so it doesn't matter. Like, obviously, uh, in this race, uh, House is one hour ahead. Nick is UK time, so he's one hour behind House. But it's all based on your uh, local system time. Very interesting. Runners usually force it through the trainer because with the old lady spawn, as you can imagine, it's very easy to spot uh, Ames. He's the only guy in the room wearing a suit. The rest are old ladies. So. Yeah, I wish I knew that ahead of time when I started practi practicing this run because um, I was not, I was getting the completely random, like the whole room was random. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. You know, it was impossible almost. It also works in VR. The, uh, the colors in, in the VR missions that are in substance will change the level colors uh, hmm. depending on uh, your time of day. So, which is really, it's just a cool feature actually. I think it's, like, yeah, it's, it's a, a cool nice level. attention to the small details. Yeah. But yeah, it's not random. Uh, it is set on timers and you can force it if you really want to. I don't because I just can't be asked to go into the trainer and. <laughs> <laughs> it does make aim spotting easier if you're not used to spotting. 
So now we're going to be on to Harrier. This is the make it or break it part of the run. This boss fight can easily kill your run very quickly if you get a really bad Harrier fight. And it's easily done, even for like, even for experienced learners. You can miss shots, um, you can unequip early, things like yeah, that. I am, um, I'm personally terrible at this fight. House went for what we call a 5 plus 1. I think Nick is going for the same. Um, I don't think uh, Nick didn't get it. So we, House went for the 5 plus 1. Unfortunately, House didn't get um, max damage on one of his shots. So he's actually going to have to go for a little bit longer. But basically what you want to do for a 5 plus 1 is you shoot three missiles straight away. You equip the Stinger as quickly as possible. Shoot three missiles. Then you aim up slightly. Shoot one as it comes overhead, and then quickly turn and shoot again. Hold the track on the Harrier, and you'll get a fifth shot that'll go over the strut. And then you'll want to turn around and face outwards, like diagonally, and then wait for a, a, what we call the plus one shot. And if you do it optimally, you'll get max damage, and you'll kill him at what we call the die shots, which is like uh, what you saw when it goes overhead and drops the bombs on top of the bridge on top of you. Yep. Um, that's the like most. It's not the most optimal. Technically, there is a, a harder strat, but no one's going to go for that in a full run. It's a six-shot Harrier, um, but five plus one is like the most optimal strat for uh, like normal, uh, normal strats. So, House did go for it. Uh, Nick went for it. Unfortunately, neither of them got it, but House did get close to it. So House did manage to save some time uh, over Nick. I think Nick missed one of his. He either missed the fourth shot and the fifth shot, or he missed the plus one and the fifth shot. As long as you don't enter the what we call a missile phase, where if you if you, uh, if you don't do enough damage at all, you will fly underneath the bridge and then come up in front of you on one of the sides, uh, and he'll shoot missiles at you, which uh, basically is quite close to far into the fight, and at that point you've lost quite a bit of time, and usually. Usually it would kill your run before that if, if you're a if you're a high tier runner or a, a top top runner um, you pretty much want the five plus one every time like anything less and you can you can save it but yeah it, it's hard and, uh, as you get as the time comes down it runs must be tough having a reset after thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big run killer. It's it's a run killer early on as well for people like learning because it can be frustrating. Uh, there are there are plenty of other strats you can do. There are things like a, I think it's a two plus five uh, strat, which is pretty consistent. That's usually the net. That's usually the second best go to uh, if you fail a five plus one. Something or you can just do like four shot, four plus one, three three plus one. You know, you can do literally you can do anything really. You can do no shots if you really want to. But uh, optimally, five plus one is what you go for, and and when you're learning it, it's hard. But eventually, yeah. <laughs> you get used to it and you, you figure it out. Yeah, that's where I definitely struggled the most. I think my PB is like a one uh, one hour twenty minute, give or take, and that's probably where I lost the most time. Yeah, how are you usually? Um, Nick having some trouble grabbing the uh, the key box here, flipping backwards and forwards yeah, in the water. Uh, I think he's just uh, making it uh, more challenging. Uh, you know, he's confident that he will uh, beat House. He's just giving himself a challenge here. <laughs> I, I kid, but uh, that box can be a weird. There's a weird like physics change when you're in water in this game. If you noticed, uh, both of them can literally be quite far above that box and Raiden will grab it. Like you saw on Nick's screen, he was miles above that box. Right. Um, for whatever reason, this doesn't go for every box either because this, the Stinger box in the Harrier fight is right in front of you. And that has the smallest hitbox in the world. Doing? It's very easy to walk through that box and it doesn't grab it. Stop but in the Kia box here, for whatever reason, because it's in the water, or just the way they, they coded it, you don't have to touch it at all. Just swim right above it, and you'll grab it. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, this game has a lot of weird things, and uh, I took the they don't make sense most of the time. <laughs>
Uh, so we're at the president section. None of, neither of them killed the president. Uh, that's a possibility. People have done it on uh, world record pace. Um, I won't name any names, but you know who you are. And so does the, 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 the community. <laughs> um, and people have done it on PB pace. Uh, v, it takes two shots to kill the president with the gear. I don't know about easy, if easy's two shots, but I do know from normal and up, it's one shot to kill the president. So much easier to kill him on the higher difficulties. He also does have a tendency to run towards the missiles for some reason. He like sees a flying <laughs> missile and there's no way you could mistake it. You know it's a missile. And he decides, hmm, I think I'll walk into that. House is now in the swimming section. Uh, Nick, not far, not too far behind. Getting a fast elevator there by the looks of it as well, which is good. Save a few seconds. Um, they're not entirely random. I believe they're based on frame time, frame, the frame that you press on, which I guess is random because you don't have a frame counter. You don't have the count of the exact frames in the game. So, but I, I'm pretty sure it's just based on frames, which is the same in MGS1. Um, both are opting to just swim the section. So there is a trick here you can do. Um, neither of them have done it, which is fair enough. It is, it's not an easy trick. Um, it's called swim glitch. And basically what it is, it allows you to swim against the wall and Ryan will swim out of the water, but he'll still be in his swimming animation. And you just swim up this the corner of this wall and then you're able to go out of bounds above the roof. So you get outside the map and we're able to swim all the way over to this fight that the house just completed in two seconds, which is the vamp. Uh, vamp one fight and that saves a bunch of time you don't have to swim through this entire section but they both did which is fair play to them because that trick is not easy for uh, people learning it or beginners um it's a hard trick even for uh you know um well established runners and, and people that have been running for a while it, it can quite easily kill runs as well. and this is the vamp the vamp one fight um Real easy on V, uh, you can just turbo, you just walk up to the edge, aim down at his feet and uh, let rip on the turbo singer and easy kill. You do need to have enough missiles, I forget what the exact amount is for turbo, it is definitely over 11 stingers. Um, 11 stingers will not cut it either, but I know that the, the, the total amount of stingers needed is over like 11. Um, easy fight in V. Quick. So now they've grabbed Emma, uh, arguably one of the most annoying sections in the game. We have to escort Otacon's sister, yeah, Emma, and um, it's basically just a big old long escort section that wastes so much time. And we'd be glad if anyone could find a skip for this entire thing. Um, that would be very nice. Um, there is a trick that was recently discovered in the past year. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it was this year, um, earlier in the year. Uh, we call it Emma Zip or Chelsea Zip. It was discovered uh, accidentally by a, um, another runner of the community, uh, Miss Chelsea's. She was just uh, not messing around. She was in a run and then she got alerted and she was like uh, trying to uh, not get spotted. And she ended up walking to Emma and completely zipped her out of existence. And we were completely confused about it. And then we tried to recreate it, recreated it, but it's very risky. It's it's no like it's not like Oba from MGS1, there's no 50% chance. It's super random. Not really random, but it's so risky that most people won't go for it. And is that the trick that you and JMC were doing uh in the elevator that yeah, uh, house yeah, is yeah. getting to right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do it in a minute and usually it will be done uh, very shortly you'll see house go back up to floor one and that's usually where we'll try to go for it house might might even go for it um i'm not sure if he will but it's a risk it's basically near impossible to get it most of the time it's just it's sheer luck you just do a setup and hope for it you know, he's not going to go for it that's fair enough uh, no need he is ahead right now so We'll see if Nick goes for it. Um, it basically just zips her out of existence and it allows you to run all the way to the end of this room. You run out uh, and then you come back in and reload the room and she'll spawn 
uh, right by these set of boxes uh, that are coming up. There's um, some boxes that you'll see in a minute on the house's screen. And um, she'll just be behind them and you can grab her hand and walk her out. And uh, well, Nick going for it. I mean, so we'll see if Nick gets it, we'll see if Nick gets it. Bit of a weird setup, I've never seen this exact setup of it. But we'll see you. See if you can get it. Yeah. No, nope, not happening. Um, at this point, I would just grab her and walk her out normally. Uh, you can't actually save any time by continuing to do it. Uh, this trick only saves in this section, seven seconds, and you can do another one out on this bridge here where house is, and that saves another eight seconds if done optimally on first cycle, first bump. If she zips on first bump, which isn't, you know, it's rare, uh, you can save a total of 15 seconds in this entire section from inside to this bridge. But the bridge, everybody's kind of... Oh, okay, Nick got wide there, yeah. That's because he, the, the Yammer bump cost him a lot of time here. So cycle, guard cycles are off than what they normally would be. But he, he, he uh, sorted it out, killed the guy before he could radio in, which is good. You do not want a radio call in there because it gets very hairy. Um, yeah, and sorry, as I was saying, it saves 15 seconds. But the one outside on the KL bridge is arguably harder than the one inside. Uh, most people will go for the one inside on the bridge, though. It's basically non-existent. Um, there's also another random thing that I don't know if anyone knows why it happens. But in that room that Nick just left, the shell, the shell 2 for 1, when you kill that guard, um, not the guard that was yawning that he killed originally that spotted him, but the second guard that spots you, when you kill him, you can just get a, what we call a phantom radio call. He won't uh, he won't even call a radio for the backup, but you'll just get a radio call, like even though he's dead, and a backup squad will come. It's random, weird, and I don't know if anyone knows why. Really? No, I've never seen that. It's super rare to get, as far as I'm aware. Like, I've never gotten it. Um, not to say that I won't. I've actually wanted one in a race before, just for shit laugh, but... <laughs> it's never happened, but I have seen one in a race, so it does exist. House is on sniping section. Uh, Nick's about to come up to it. Nick actually quite far behind house now uh, because of that Emma zip did not go through. Uh, you lose a lot of time there for the time that Nick spent there. He lost quite a lot of time. Um, house is fairly, fairly far ahead. It may not seem like it, but the sniping section will uh, make it look like they're much closer. This whole section is like, I think it's like four or five minutes long. Something or like three, three, four minutes long total. And uh, it's just an oil roller, pretty much. You're waiting for Emma to walk around these uh, these oil fences. And she's really slow because obviously her she's had her legs trank. She's been uh, had her legs uh, Frank said she can't work, she can't um, walk very fast. And so you just have to take out these guards and these ciphers that are uh, specific spawns. Um, which both of these runners will know where to aim and where to shoot. Um, and then you just wait for her to go around and then we'll start the Vamp 2 fight. Where Vamp grabs Emma and... Uh, Vamp will grab Emma and uh, you'll have to shoot Vamp and kill him. There's not much to do in this section besides way, like I said, it's an auto scroller. You just kill ciphers and guards. And... Wait for Snake to call. We would like a skip for this section as well, if anyone uh, manages to find one. Uh, there is actually rewards for a bunch of skips, not just in this game, but you know, a few other games, like MGS1 and stuff. Uh, there are literal monetary rewards in the, com uh, rewards in the community for finding uh, the skips. That would be nice. Um, the reward for this one, I forget how much it is, but it's basically to find a sizable skip, like like being able to get past Shell 1 without doing it, to so get past the door that goes into the Harrier fight. Um, being able to skip this kind of this section, or like skip the, the other section fully, that would be uh, probably worthy enough of that bounty. So far, 
nothing. Um, we already know most of the, the known uh, things like the door glitch that lets you, you do the PPK uh, kick uh, glitch to go through the door. It doesn't work because the door checks for cards. So. Well, only time will tell. I mean, we just yeah. saw this year with the Boba skip. I mean, just look how that was found. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. people we try, you know, people are trying stuff all the time. Um, as you mentioned earlier, me and Jameson were doing some uh, some, some uh, Emma Zip stuff along with Tino. Me, uh, Jameson, and Tino for the past twenty four hours, I think, have been trying to figure out something for Emma Zip, trying to see if we can push push anything further, but no luck yet. Um, as you can see, Nick is shooting seagulls. It's pretty much what some people do in this section for fun because <laughs> uh, it is a real boring section it's kind of uh, for commentating this is the dead air section there's not much to talk about uh, it's hard to fill it fill it in with any information uh, I guess if people are interested in running this game I'm sure Nick has linked to uh, community and things on his on his Twitch channel and it's probably cool. but yeah um Join, join the Discord, LGSpeedrunners.com. Um, Discord link is there and things. Uh, it's a great community. Uh, people like all four of us in here, the two runners and Garrigs and me are in it, and a bunch of uh, other wonderful people uh, that would gladly help you to learn any of the runs. Um, all, all sorts of runs in, in like all sorts of MG games as well. All the way from the old NES ones and MSX ones to to the more modern ones and even obscure ones. So, but secretly, I know you want to join and run uh, MGS Two V. Yeah. Let's be real; <laughs> it's the only real speed run that we've got here. It does seem to be uh, picking up in popularity lately. That's a shout out to my boy JMC V King right now. Loves it <laughs> too. Okay, house, yep, house is done. Um, vamp 2 is so fast that I actually missed it. Um, literally, if you blink, uh, it's over and done with. It's just the same, about as fast as Vamp 1. So. Poor Vamp. Both fights, and then blink Yeah, uh, <laughs> and he still doesn't die. He's there in number 4. All right. With the bullet hole in his head as well, I think, from <laughs> that fight. But yeah, Nick will be coming up to that in a minute. Um, don't blink for that one so you can actually see the fight again. You've got, you've got another chance here. Um, but while we wait for that, House is on the EF bridge. He's got to go to the show one coin. This bridge, this little section here, uh, if you get a continue here by getting spotted by the cipher and getting shot while you're crossing that bridge, if you're on one of those uh, trap doors, it is the worst place in the game, if not one of the worst places in the game, to get a continue. It sets you all the way back to the start of this section, which is literally just as you finish that codec call after you climb up the ladder. So all the way back in that strut, you'll start there and you'll have to make your way all the way out to the bridge again. It is, uh, it's rough. So I think it's probably the, it probably is the worst place to get a continue. I don't think any other continue in the game sets you that far back. Nick. Killing Vamp uh, quickly as well. Uh, the trick to killing Vamp quickly, like an easy trick, is when the fight starts, do not move, do not touch any of the movement stick. Do not touch the left stick at all. Wait a fraction of a second, and then with turbo, just hold down the fire button. On VE, it takes like four shots to kill him, and it'll kill him pretty quickly. Uh, the shots it takes to kill him obviously increases depending on difficulty, but you can turbo kill him on every difficulty. It will work. So, I have done it. I've done the aisles for this. Although you wouldn't do it in the aisles, you do a different strat, but yeah, you can turbo him on all different things. It does work. Nick on the same section, the EF bridge, like I said. Uh, this can be rough if you get continuing. You do not want to miss shots on these uh, cycles. It only takes one shot, but you'll be surprised how easy it is for the auto aim in this game to just suck at the section and cost you. The first cipher that you run into that's basically right above the doorway, uh, there's a trick to getting it uh, consistent. Start shooting just before you exit the doorway and you'll usually lock up. 
sometimes if you don't and you go to lock on and shoot, you'll miss it because you're so close. You just won't auto aim in time. House is now entering Judgenham, which is we're now in Arsenal gear, the big Arsenal gear. Um, House is going to answer two of these codec calls as soon as possible. So the first one there, he's just going to hold the select for the buffer. He's going to get immediately get it. And he got this one here. And that's going to allow him to take the fast route here, as long as he cartwheels at the top of the stairs. Okay, not going for the cart. Okay, no, going for the punch cartwheel. That works as well. I was going for the punch cartwheel. So that allows him to make his way through this room without getting an alert. If you get an alert in this room, you'll severely lose time. It's not an easy room to get out of, and you definitely will lose time because you'll get shot or kicked. Um, and then he wants to cartwheel across that gap. The gap of unfathomable sadness. I can barely say that word. <laughs> That's what we've given it uh, the title of. Um, JMC knows that gap all too well. I know that gap all too well. Pretty sure every runner who's ever run this game knows that gap. Uh, yeah, I haven't run it very long, but yeah, not a fun yeah. one to uh, fall down. It's a big time loss. I think it's like 14 seconds or something if you drop down, like actual time loss. So it's a good chunk of time that you, uh, you lose for falling down. And it's easy to actually fall down. You can miscalculate uh, the edge that you cartwheel on. Uh, like I said, if you get an alert, uh, you'll have Tengu shooting at you, so you have to time your cartwheel that you don't get shot. If you get shot mid-cartwheel, you're dropping. You're going to fall straight down. Um, so, it is a difficult one. We'll see if Nick can get it. Um, is that why uh, doing the punch before the cartwheel on that guard is safer? Uh, it prevents no, that alert? That's, uh, if you punch him and then cartwheel, uh, it's actually quicker. Uh, if you saw there, Nick cartwheeled into him and he got hung up on his body. Um, Obviously, when you when you walk across bodies, knocked out or dead, you slow down. You walk across right. them instead of running across them. If you punch a cartwheel, it allows you to cartwheel straight through him instead of into the corner with him. I see. Um, you can cartwheel into him like Nick did and actually get out without walking on his body, but it's just it's an easier setup for the punch. That's all. You just need to make sure you hit both those codecs, uh, pretty much like on the first frame or just just after the first frame. Uh, so that you have enough time if you don't, uh, if you're too slow, that guard will turn around and will instantly spot you. There are no radio backups, you will just get uh, an instant, like you'll get an alert. Not, uh, I don't think there's radios anyway, I think, I think they just alert and the backup just turns up. Oh, House failed uh, Tengu 1 skip there first time. We'll see if he gets it this time. He did. There we go. Uh, so I was I actually refer to this in the sniping section. This is like a door skip that uh, you can do. You can actually do this on a few doors in, in the plant. Um, it doesn't work on most of the other doors because you don't have a card to open them. It'll just like soft lock the game. But here it works because you don't actually need a card to get through this door. Obviously, it's the end of the game. The door is just shut. But what happens is you. Go into you punch punch kick. You go into FPV, punch punch kick, and as soon as the kick initiates, you let go of FPV, and it basically it acts almost like uh, like Boba Skip with the animation. It pushes Ryden's hitbox enough through the door, because when he kicks, he goes backwards, and so his hitbox goes through the door, hits the loading trigger, and we're able to skip Tengu one. Um, House missed it on the first go, and you do lose a, a, a small amount of time there if you miss it on the first go, but he managed to get it. Get it uh, second go, which is uh, decent. We'll see and how much time? Did. How much time save is that? I don't know the exact time save, but you pretty much want to get it first time. <laughs> it, it, it's a good time save. Uh, because well, I mean, Merc versus uh, just actually playing through the section and fighting oh, back all the time. Quite, quite a lot. You have to wait like, for this. Yeah, it's not a minute, but it's probably like probably like 20, 30 seconds, maybe a little less. I'm not 100 percent sure. Oh, nice. Um, okay. It's a good, a it is a good time save. Yeah. This section is long because you have to wait for Snake to run up and you have to kill a bunch of Tengus. Like a certain amount of Tengus you have to kill, I guess. And Snake has to make his way up. So, yeah. like you say, the first try, which is good. He's now on what we call Tengu 2. Uh, there is a actual way to set this fight up to make it easier and I think to actually make it faster. Um, I believe it was done, uh, found by, it was made by um, Beswick. Uh, Is that the coolant? 
No, no, no. That was a, that was a, the more recent one for higher difficulties. Uh, I wish we could do that on V. The V fight, I think, is on average like 40, 45 seconds long. And you cannot do the cool and skip, unfortunately, which is sad. I'd love to have the cool and skip in V, but unfortunately we just have to do it the traditional way, which is Stinger. And these Tengus. So yeah, sorry, Nick was out in a specific ace. I think he's not exactly in the position, but he is close enough where you want to be at the further end of this room here, where he stood, so that you get a better angle on these Tengus coming out. If you stand in the middle of the room, it will be slower, because I think they'll jump out and jump straight over the railing, giving you very little time to actually shoot them. Um, I think it just manipulates their, their movement when they exit by standing. That's good to know. Explains why I had such bad uh, Tengu 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, on V, you have to kill 48 Tengus, um, and that includes the ones that Snake kill as well. So it's not just you, it is all the Tengus that both then Snake kill in that section. We just saw House do raise as well. Uh, Nick's got those coming up. Uh, House is now on the torture scene. This is also why we use Turbo, why we allow Turbo. Um, it's not the only reason, but this is one of the reasons it's helpful. Uh, you don't have to mash. Not that V is hard to mash, but things like Euro Extreme are hardest difficulties. Uh, it takes a toll on your wrist. No reason to get Carpal Tunnel. <laughs> there are people in the community that can attest to it as well. Like, it's not just some, like, made up stuff. People have had uh, issues because of it. It's also just inclusive, you know, like, you know, it's not that, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I like Turbo. You know, it allows people that might suffer with wrist issues to, to actually play have a, a nicer experience. So we'll see Nick on the raise here. Uh, the setup here is, I think there's two setups. There's this one, which is, oh, okay, Nick missed the first shot, but uh, the two setups is you um, equip the stinger as fast as possible and immediately shoot for the, uh, the mouth of the first one that's opening. And then you shoot left or right. I think if you go to the right, it's faster, but... You have to do uh, some extra setup that I'll, I'll mention. And then um, you'll shoot the left one as it opens its mouth. You'll shoot, it'll hit, do a critical shot, and then you'll walk backwards or off to the side, and then you'll turn around, and the third one will jump on stage, and you'll just shoot it in the leg, shoot it in the mouth, and you're done. The faster method allows you to get all three before they jump on stage. Um, I think you shoot the first two like normal, and then you cartwheel forwards and shoot the last one in the face. It stops it from jumping on. Um, House is on Solidus, which is the last fight in the game. Uh, his uh, first, first uh, phase of Solidus, he'll just fire missiles at you. You need to be far enough away, and then when he fires the missiles, as he goes to fire the missiles, you'll just cartwheel back into him, dodging the missiles, and then attack him. So you do that till phase two, and then phase, uh, phase two, as you just saw, will dash around the roof, and then either elbow you, kick you, or do sword attacks. Um, House got a couple of sword attacks there. Looks like he got hit as well. Got knocked down, which is uh, not not what you want. But hey, he's finished. GG's to House. Nick's just coming up to this fight now. We'll see uh, how Nick's fight goes. Can explain it a little bit better. The fight actually happened. Um, <laughs> so here he will slash him, or you can, you do want to punch him. Nick's actually gonna. Uh, mess up the phase a little bit here. Um, he needs to cartwheel into him now, and now hit him with the three sword attacks. Now he needs to move away. Far enough away, it's not far enough. Um, move then. So he uh, keeps switching his blade. Basically, when he gets to half HP, he'll, he'll switch to phase two. So he switch to phase two now. And you want to try and cartwheel far enough away from him to do a short glide or a short dash. Obviously, it'll save time because he goes into a cutscene here, so the shorter distance he has to dash, the less time you spend waiting for him to get into this cutscene, which is unskippable. You have to watch this. And then in phase two, he's going to dash around the room. He can dash straight towards you if you're far enough away. Sometimes he'll dash straight at you. He'll either kick or elbow. Uh, he elbowed there, which is good. You, you pretty much want an, uh, two elbows or two kicks. Um, because sword attacks obviously run the risk of getting hit. Nick got two elbows, which is uh, really nice, and that's GT3. Very good. 
nice solid this fight there from Nick. A uh, little, little uh, rocky at Do the beginning, but this place? he brought it back in. Yeah. Of course. GG. This GG's is where we to both met. Good run. GG, nice. I remember now. Mm -hmm. Oh god, Nick didn't let me win early on. He really chased me. Uh, uh, plus yeah, my tank was just like horrible. <laughs> I really came back with the plant. But Those as we said in the commentary as well, a tanker it does not mean anything. Uh, the plant is the real decider. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like it's obviously, it's always time to be saved on plant. Indeed. Obviously, because I'm streaming. Oh, hang on. You guys, I'm hoping I'm very close to. There we go. Now they can hear me. <laughs> hey, there you go. There he is. So let's let's see yeah, what well it done. Be. GGs. GGs. GG. Yeah, pretty much. Um, after Harrier, that was it. I couldn't. I just couldn't catch up. I've, I tried to do Emma Zip to to yeah. catch up because I figured it was the only thing that was going to let me catch up, and yeah, it just completely went wrong. I've not actually got it in a run yet, but I've I have done it in practice. That is the risk of Emma Zip. Right yeah, now. yeah. Um, I think I will I'll not do it for a very long time. I'm just going to bank on what I know is safe. You know, bring after it the. Home. Um... <laughs> We've been doing a lot of, like I said, I did say in commentary, like me, Tino, and JMC have been doing a lot of labbing on it recently, the past day or so. Um, and the setup we're using, at even at five bumps, if it takes you five bumps to get it, we break even, if not, only lose two seconds over the total time for the normal route. Because I think BMN said the normal route in that room dragging her from start to finish is 52 seconds. And I think with five bumps and like not too great movement, if you have like some rough movement, getting out uh, it's like 54 seconds total but when nick went quite far right like he was trying to bump and stuff but by that point you, it's you've lost too much time yeah unfortunately um but you gave it you gave it a shot i mean if you're behind like that's a great trick to, to just try yeah respectful and, yeah, being brave enough um, to do it it's just like yeah, seven it's seven to ten seconds give or take like depending on what setup you use and how quickly around you get it if you get it at all I'm just glad we could bring this to the table. Uh, we had a few chances. I couldn't do it, or Nick wasn't there. So we finally made the Nick versus House race happen. We'll see what the IGTs are. Um, yep. It, it was pretty close for the entire race. House had the mistake in tanker. Um, God, yeah. I could have led early on, but no. <laughs> but then you had a, a pretty good. Good, Harry. It was almost a five plus one. You just yeah, didn't I missed enough damage. You missed damage, um, and then Nick went for it, and it's unfortunate it didn't. It didn't land. I think I couldn't. I didn't see exactly what shots she missed, but it looked like either four and five or five and a plus one. Yeah, I did. I got the first three. Obviously, you always get the first three. I miss, I missed number four, and then that because uh, number four was still in the air, I couldn't couldn't fire number five. Um, I fi I did in the end fire number five, but it was oh no no I didn't fire number five. I then went for the plus one, and yeah. um, that was too late. So it uh, hit the um hit the sh uh, the building instead. So yeah, it's really yeah. really bad Harrier. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I did say it's it's a run killer. Even still, like it'll it'll kill your times early on. It'll kill your times even if you get lower and lower. On, on time. Yeah. It's like when, when I sit down and said, okay, I'm going to take this run serious now. Because for like half a year, I was just casually playing along. Because all of these fine people motivated me to like, I should I should pick a V. And now, um, not to brag, but I got to be in ESA winter next February. I, well, and I, uh, I feel <laughs> very motivated to take this serious now and practice a lot every day. <laughs> we, we Especially Harrier. That. Harrier is a huge time saver still. That was a really close Harrier. You literally missed it by damage alone. That was it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It could have almost get, been perfect. Yeah. You did not get an outer wing shot, or you you didn't get the high damage shot. Yeah, that, those are the fine details I still need to crack down on. But overall, the, the yeah. hardest thing is the plus one and the two die shots. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't get. You literally like it's near impossible to get. I don't think you can get a wing shot at all. They're just set the same damage, but you yeah. have to hit the wing shots on the first five shots because that's where all your damage is. I see. You can actually hit because you actually have a targeting uh, square for the the wing still yeah. at those points. Um, but it was close. It was very. You were literally like one shot off. You had to do a, a last shot as he comes back with the missiles. And it, even then, I I saw it like you missed a couple of shots. You got on that. I think you fired three shots. You missed the first two. Could be. 
I mean, uh, from the last dive, um, I think the first one also missed. I was like, oh no, I said the, sec the second shot off, and that one hit funny. That was enough to kill the fight. Yeah. You can't unequip oh there early. If you unequip too early, you'll just lose lock. Ah, okay. Uh, on the miss, when he come like when you did, where you had to shoot him, when he comes back and he fires those two missiles, just stay, mm. stay on him, like just line up for the lock on as soon as you True. see it, like turbo shoot it and just stay in the stinger. Mm. Um, that'll actually work for your menus if you've menu to chaff before. Um, yeah, you, you, yeah. Um, you finish the fight, you'll have the chaff on. You know why I went for directly the stinger? Because the save file doesn't have the chaff on us equipped. So when I was in practice, I always had to go all the way with the menu. Yeah, yeah. I guess I was just like, you know what, I'm going to do what I practiced. And I think it paid out in the end. Still. No, no, yeah, that's that's definitely to stick with the consistent stuff that works for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't lose that much time by not menuing to chaff. It's just to set up the menu after the fight. If you don't, you just have to menu after the fight. Like, it's not a big. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's also another thing. Yeah, I need oh, to I do still menu command. after the fight because I don't, uh, I stay up top when I do dice. <laughs> so yeah. I still have to menu off of it. So. Yeah. All the little details. <laughs> you both, you both played pretty well. I'd like, I, I'm, I want to see what the times are. To be honest, but, oh yeah. Um, uh, Nick, what's close. your PB right now? Uh, my current PB is. Uh, I actually have to look at speedrun.com. I know this won't be a PB. This will, I, I've done way better than this. Uh yeah, one six oh nine. There we go. Yeah. We're very close mm -hmm. right now. I have a 1540. I'm hoping I can squeeze out a second or two in this race. So I hope you can give me a copy later. <laughs> 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 if it PBs. Absolutely. I mean, I'll I'll um, go out to every every runner who's been on and ask if it's all right to put them all on YouTube. So mm -hmm. everyone loves watching races on course, YouTube. Right away. Yeah, uh, I don't mind. I'm pretty sure JMC doesn't mind, but ask him anyway. This is choice, but I don't mind. I'm sure he probably doesn't mind either. He's in the chat, I think, maybe. His text stays on forever. <laughs> okay, we got. We actually, and this the game isn't actually finished. Spoiler alert, guys! There is two oh. more cutscenes. Oh. 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 Yeah. And yeah, two, seconds, two seconds. <laughs> nice. Two nice. Seconds. PB. Jesus. PB is a PB, right? Well done, <laughs> dudes. You got it. It's a PB with a like 650 tanker. Like, if I just do a better tanker in the same plan, I could so easily save time yeah. here. <laughs> you have a massive time save. If you, if it's Absolutely. <laughs> and Ooh. you are like JMC said earlier before, like when we were just in the, the other Discord, like your yeah. movement is improved so much, you can even tell. You can just see it, just put in the time. I can really recommend just do a run where you force yourself to do zero card wheels. You very quickly uh, notice like which card wheels are the really good ones that you should always do. Like, like for example, if you set up a menu, really worth it. And if you go downstairs, specific ones. All the others are like, I think, optional right now. And they could cost you more time if you do them bad rather than just keep on walking. And yeah. I think that makes a huge difference right away for me. A rule of thumb for cartwheels is only cartwheel when you're in a straight line. Any other That's time, it's them. generally not worth it. Um, yeah. Cartwheeling in like against the wall, like even though you get a cartwheel off, you'll lose time because you're actually bumping against the wall and it slows down. Um, and it's not like straight, so it's like at an angle, um, mm. which is fine if there's nothing Ooh. in the way. You can cartwheel angle. It is faster for certain things. Or if you cartwheel straight into a wall and you stop, that's like a one second time loss. Just for a couple, yeah. or like less, just less than a second time loss. And there comes the IGT. Let's yeah. have a look. Nick. Don't forget to skip the last cutscenes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> He's furious. One hundred seven oh eight. They're not bad. Seven oh eight. GG. So, a minute, minute behind PB. Just seems about right for for power performed. Not bad though. Uh, like being close to PB. Like even by a minute, it's 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 good. Like the more you do it, the more consistency builds. Absolutely. Well, GGs to both of you. Uh, congrats Thank on the you. PB as well, House. Yeah, well done, dude. Thank you. Nice well to get done. a nice to get a PB on a race. Always good. Right. Very motivating as well. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and yeah, uh, just to reiterate what's already been said, House is going to be racing at ESA Winter uh, against Mockingjay, if, I, if I'm correct. Indeed, You're both yes. going to be there in person. This isn't a yeah. over the internet race. This will be them in person playing together. Um, There's no link between us. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be amazing. So you should definitely uh, definitely check that out. 